Hello everyone, this is your cat tutor again. Uh, this time I'm going to go over uh, patterns for both assemblies and components, individual components. So this feature is really helpful when you have repeated instances or patterns uh, such as uh, screws in a line or several components such as LEDs, circular components. So as you uh, can see from this view, this is the the previous model that we built up together in the previous lesson. Uh, I've added a couple of different things. I've added this hole for for the fan and a hole for an LED, as well as mounting bosses, these standoffs for the PCB. I've also thrown in a couple of components, oh, each respective component, which you can either model yourself with using the dimensions given uh, by the manufacturer or you can just cut them yourselves with just generic dimensions. Uh, let me open up this component. Here we see uh, what I've created uh, and I won't go over that. If you need help feel free to send me a message or leave me a comment and I will gladly help you with that. Uh, but I want to go over uh, patterns. So I'll start with patterns within a component. That is to say, uh, if I want to repeat a single a single feature multiple times, I'll do that in a linear pattern and I'll do that circular. So, so I'll start with this LED cutout. But you can see on the design tree on the left, I have named some of these myself. Uh, by default, they're named uh, Boss Extrude or Extrude Cut extrude cut one two three and so forth but it's it's much easier to name them yourself that way you can know immediately which one you have to modify it in the future so in this case it's slow click uh, left click and you can change it I'll change this to main body and then you hit enter and it's as simple as that so I'll go ahead and start with the pattern so I'll expand my LED cutout and I'll right click and edit my sketch so this is my sketch. This is uh, the panel cutout, the hole cutout required for an LED, and its its dimension is 11 millimeters, so it's just under half an inch. So it's fully defined. You can see it's color black. You can see down here it says fully defined. But I'm going to repeat this a couple of times. Say my electronic box needs three or four LEDs. Um, I don't want to have to define every single hole that I'm creating, especially if they are in a in a pattern. So what I'll do is first I select the sketch I want a pattern or I want to copy, and then I'll go and click on my linear sketch pattern button here at the top. So automatically creates one in yellow, uh, and here on the left you can see all the options for that. Uh, automatically it also picks the X axis, so it's going to the right. Alternatively. If you would want to go up or down instead of side to side, you can change this instance number from 2 to 1 and then change the other direction from 1 to whatever number you need, say let's say 2 or 3. So 3, automatically it'll, it'll create the 3 uh, in the other direction. Again, I don't want this, so I'll leave it back to 1 and I'll change my X axis, my X direction uh, to three. I will need three LEDs. So I will click, I'll change this to three, click on any other parts outside of, of that window, goes back and creates my three yellow rings. <clears throat> and I'll set the distance, the offset between each one of these. So I'll be a little more forgiven and I'll go with that. So now that I'm done, I've set the number of copies that I want in total. So this includes the very first one that's already been created and the distance of each one of them apart from each other. So now I can go ahead and click OK. There they are. So now they are, you can see the number of instances here, number three. And you can later just click on this number and change it. If you want four, it'll add a fourth one. But I'll go back and leave it at three. You see that it's in blue. Uh, SolidWorks doesn't automatically dimension them, even though you have set the distance. It does not do that, so you would have to go ahead and add that dimension 
as well as its horizontal constraint and see automatically it fixes all three. You just need to dimension one uh, and then the rest of them will, will be fixed. Now exit sketch. Now we have our three holes. Now I'll go ahead and, and do circular before we move on to the assembly here. You see it already updated. I want to do the same exercise but now in a circular fashion. So I will edit my fan cutout here on the left. Edit sketch. And what I'll do is since I already had it had it done prior to starting this video, but I'm going to start from scratch. Assuming this doesn't exist. Assuming there's only one one hole here. So now I want four of these holes. Or so I do the same exercise. I click on the sketch that I want to be repeated, to be copied, and then I go up here, but instead of clicking linear sketch pattern, I'll click on the uh, drop down menu and I'll pick circular sketch pattern. So automatically it picked the origin as the center point of rotation. So it created also automatically four circles in a 360 degree uh, pattern around this the center origin, but I don't want that. I don't want, I want them to be around this point. So since it's already pre-selected, I can right click here and delete. And it turns red, meaning that it's asking for an input and that the input would be the center of the fan hole. So I will click that and automatically it rearranges. And it'll pick the same distance from the center as the original, as well as a 360 degree and radial distance. So there you have it. Uh, now you can exit your sketch and you end up with the same pattern as before but now it's a circular pattern um, so now we're going to exit or we're going to save and we're going to go back to our assembly here I've gone ahead and, and added the components that we're going to repeat so I've added the screw that I'll need to create a pattern for this is what will fix the fan in place I've added the LED that I want to repeat and I've added the pan head screw for mounting the PCB onto our box. So I'll start the same way I did the, the sketches. So I'll start linearly. So this is already fixed. So I'm going to repeat this three times in the same manner. So now I'm going to pattern this LED. I select the LED either from the design tree here or you can actually click on your part. Sometimes when you click on an edge it may not understand that you're trying to select the component. So just to be safe and quicker potentially just go ahead and click on the component if you can find it on your design tree now we're gonna go and click on this button up here that says linear component pattern and first it's asking for a direction same as before except this time it does not pick any directions at all you can pick many things uh, one thing I like to use usually is one of the edges that are along the direction of what I want my pattern to be in so any of these top edges would work just fine. So I'll click this edge here and it automatically creates uh, a copy, but it's really far away and it's only one copy. I want a total of three copies. So first I'm going to change the distance from one point, whatever number that is, 96 to 0.75. And you can see it's going to be right on top. And I want to change my copies or instances. You see number of instances highlighted there from two to three. Now we hit OK. And now we have three identical LEDs. Now there's one thing with these LEDs uh, that I'll talk about in just a minute once I finish this because you may not want to have the exact same green LED. You may want to have a green, a yellow, and a red or something else like that. But I'll get to that in a minute. First of all, I'll go ahead and mate it. Now I can go ahead and do my, because you see that that took us a few seconds, 30 seconds, maybe even a minute. You don't want to be doing that three more times. That's four or five minutes, which can be done in, done in a single uh, operation. So I'm going to select the 
the component that I just made it, and I'm going to do that four times using a circular component pattern. So I go back up here, similarly as before, I click on the drop down menu button, and then I will click on my circular component pattern. As you can see, there's a lot more different ways of patterning, but the more common ones are linear and circular. So I'll click on circular. Now the same thing, it's going to be asking the direction. So I'm going to pick this circular edge, uh, the degrees, six, 360 degrees, that's exactly what I want. But I don't want two, I want four. So I'm going to change this to four. And you see it's already that phantom yellow preview. Uh, and that's it. And you don't have to do one component at a time if for instance you not only have a screw but you also have a nut in the back and then you have a washer and many things so you could right click here and edit uh, you can add several components here under components to pattern in this blue box you can select multiple different components and create the pattern for all of them at once and always remember when you select a a pattern it is the pink component the original one the blue ones are the copies uh, don't worry your bill of materials all of them will show up not just one so now I want to show you guys one last type of pattern which is mirroring mirroring is also very very useful um, again I haven't constrained this this little guy here so I'll go ahead and do that So now, in this exercise, I'm going to show you two. One which you've already done, which is linear, and the other one is the mirror one that I was just talking about. So I'll select my component, and then I'll do what I did just a minute ago with the LEDs. I'll create a linear component pattern. It's already been selected. I'll select the edge of my PCB, but it's throwing it on the other side. So in order to change the direction, you just click on this button here, and it reverses the direction. There you go. And now that I see that there's three, I don't want three, I want two. And they're too close to each other. I believe this distance here is 2.75. There we go. So again, this is something we've already done. However, I want to do it on this other side. Now I can do linear and just find the distance between here and here. But I can also do the mirror. And I'll do that. So what I do is I actually select the pattern feature, the local pattern three feature down here. I select that. And then under my patterns, there is the mirror components option. So now it's asking me for the mirror plane. So that is the halfway plane that these will be mirrored about. And I wanted to be mirrored about my the middle plane of this printed circuit board so I'll go find my printed circuit board blank PCB I'll expand it and I'll select that middle plane in this case is the front plane so I'll select that and it'll mirror so you don't have to tell it which components the components you selected it'll just create an exact mirrored copy so once I do that there you have it now the difference between mirror and, and, and linear pattern or the applications rather is that if I go back and I change this component and I instead of right now instead of being two inches long or wide I change this to three four or five inches whatever I do it once I close this and update this assembly the screws will remain the same way they were originally so they will be mirrored about the PCB's middle plane. However, if I had used a pattern, the screw would have been would have remained here because I gave it a fixed distance from one to the next. That's one of the advantages of a mirror. A mirror doesn't have a distance. A mirror simply picks a plane and mirrors its components about that plane, wherever they end up. So that is a really useful uh, feature to select whenever applicable so I'll talk about these here so there's I created two additional LEDs but say I want to have one of these to be a different color like I said red or yellow 
So what I do is when you're creating your component, I'll open this part. When you're creating this component, you can add different display states. And what's a display state? A display state is just a different look of your component. So meaning different colors, different materials, or any appearances or scenes that that component has that could be helpful or visually useful uh, when throwing it into an assembly. So here on the top, you can see on the third tab, there is a configuration manager. So we click on that. And we have display states here at the bottom. I have already created, there's a default one, but I changed it to green because it was my first, the first color that I picked. However, I added a second display state, which is red, and doesn't automatically change to red just because you called it red. You have to go into your appearances tab here on the right and change it to whatever you wanted at the time. I, I, in this case, I picked high gloss, and I went and picked that red color, and I colored my component. Um, but when going back to the assembly, now that I know I have two different display states, I can use that. Say I want to change this one to a red. So now that it's highlighted here, see that they all say green, green, and the original up here says green. So I want to change these to a different color. So you right click on the component you want to change to the display state for, and then you go to the properties. So you go to the top right, component properties, and here it shows you the, comp the different display states. So it's currently selected green. Now we're going to change it to red. So click on red, click OK, and then it changes to red. So let's repeat that exercise for, for this middle one. To change it to yellow, and I'll, in, the, in the process, I'll show you how to change the display state. So again, under the Configuration Manager tab, you at the bottom, you have display states. You right click. A display state. So now it just calls a display state dash one. I'm going to change this to yellow. So two double clicks, two slow clicks, call it yellow. And I'm going to actually change the color to yellow. So there you go. Now it's now I save it. And now I go back to red. It's still red. Green, it's still green. So I'm going to save this. I'm going to close it. And now I'm going to change this again to yellow. So I'll click on my component, right click, properties, component properties, and then see now the new display state appeared here as yellow. So I click it. Okay. Now I have all three. So now I'm going to finish up with the lid that I had originally created on and I added also a screw see it's now a flathead screw I'm going to mate it really quickly so now again a quick exercise on linear patterns and mirror at the same time Now the mirror. And finally, since we were missing two screws, we can simply do a linear. So you can select this one and this one, which is down here. So you select those two. The component, you pick your direction to be this. Of course, it's, we want two of each. And we want it an inch 75. And there you have it. That is how to create uh, patterns for both individual components and assemblies. Uh, again, thank you for watching. Uh, don't forget to like this video and don't forget to subscribe if you want to continue being notified of new videos I post regularly. See you next time.